Hi everyone, this is uh, Dr. K. I wanted to share some of the uh, new research that came out today about COVID-19. Um, we always start or we were always trained that COVID-19 or coronavirus or the new coronavirus is respiratory. So it affects your lungs, your breathing, maybe some sinuses and some fever. So that's what I was looking for in my clinical practice. Um, around a week ago, I saw a client who had uh, severe abdominal pain uh, and some nausea, some vomiting and diarrhea. And all of the tests came back normal and it didn't make sense. So we uh, went there and admitted the patient to the hospital and watched it overnight. And this particular client was in the 20s, really young uh, female. And, uh, and we thought maybe it's just gastroenteritis, but then if it is food poisoning or regular gastroenteritis, it doesn't last a whole week. This particular client was sick for more than a week and, um, and she was in a bad shape when she came to the hospital. So after a few days, I got a call uh, from the staff saying that now, now this particular client has shortness of breath, now uh, her oxygen saturations are going down and uh, they decided to do a x-ray of the chest and that is showing maybe there's some pneumonia or lung infection. It really didn't make sense. Why would a client who is having uh, symptoms in the stomach have a uh, presentation where the, the uh, infection or whatever is now in the lungs? So, uh, so I, I eventually don't know what happened to the client and I think uh, they, were, they were planning on testing for COVID-19 I do not know if they tested or I do not know if the test came back positive or negative. It has been a while. So those are some examples uh, that create some confusion in the clinician's mind. So, uh, so I just read some of the uh, studies and some of the news today, and now they're saying um, that COVID-19 can present with abdominal symptoms, so uh, purely abdominal symptoms. So no breathing problems, no cough, nothing in the chest but more in the abdomen. So the clients can have severe abdominal pain, they can have nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. So, uh, so if you know any family member who's having those symptoms, they should look into possible COVID-19. They, they may not need testing. You know, testing is becoming a headache now. Um, I'll, I'll talk further at the end of the video about the testing part, but they should be on the lookout of, for COVID-19. You know, a lot of folks don't go to the restaurants anymore. They don't, um, they don't have the classical risk factors for uh, food poisoning anymore. So they're not eating shared food. Uh, maybe some of them, if they store the food too long, they may be eating uh, food that is uh, spoiled. So uh, food poisoning is still possible and gastroenteritis, we call it like inflammation in the stomach and the, and the bowel, it's still possible. But, uh, but we should, uh, uh, clinicians and also regular folks should look for uh, abdominal symptoms, maybe related to COVID-19. And uh, although there are some deaths reported now uh, in the media and in younger people, uh, I personally believe that COVID-19 will continue to be a mild illness um, um, in, in regular flow of folks. People who are, uh, who are older and people who are uh, immunosuppressed may, uh, may have risk factors for them to go into a critical condition where they go to the ICU uh, and they may they have a risk for death that is higher than regular flu. So, um, so I wanted to uh, get this to your attention so that you know you can educate your family and others to look for the, those symptoms. So, uh, almost all the people are now sitting at home mostly. They're not uh, traveling. They're not going out. They're not going out to work. So, if they start to have abdominal symptoms, abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, they should uh, strongly suspect COVID-19. Um, so uh, talk, to talk about testing, I wanted to make a separate video, but I'll, I'll briefly talk about testing. Testing has been a headache since the beginning of this whole situation. Um, CDC was very restrictive and they continue to be restrictive in terms of who gets the test done. Um, they have those three to four criteria that you have to follow. Uh, clinically, what we are doing is we are mostly testing people who are in the ICU or people who are uh, destined to go to the ICU where they are so sick that they may end up in the ICU uh, with respiratory illness. Uh, but the rest of the folks, uh, you know, even if we suspect COVID-19, uh, we're actually telling them to stay home and you know get hydrated, uh, support their body as much as possible, and run this out by self-quarantine. So that continues to be the practice. So if you look at the numbers, the numbers are are fudged. Uh, the initial numbers uh, are essentially an undercalculation. So the number of infections um, is way lower than what it really is. 
So it's the same thing applies to the number of deaths. You know, a lot of deaths may be because of COVID-19, but if those people are not tested for COVID-19 ahead of time, then the death can be um, uh, classified as something related to pneumonia or some bacterial infection. The bacterial infection may happen afterwards. So I wanted to bring these points to your attention. I'm hoping that this is helpful to you and your family. Um, I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow um, and uh, give you some more key information. There is, there's a lot of information coming in every day. I'm, I'm having a hard time keeping up myself. So uh, as always, uh, if you want to reach out to me, you can DM me. If you want to come in as a client, um, you're welcome to come in. I, I do consultations. Um, I, um, I offer um, energy healing and all, 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 all sorts of alternative treatments uh, that are beneficial for clients. So look forward to talking to you again. This is Dr. K. Thank you.